Hello my sweet friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. September was insanely busy for me and October is extraordinarily busy as well, which is why I am not getting it out at the very beginning of October like I usually am able to do. Um, it'll be busy for a few months and then things will be not quite as crazy and then of course they start to get busy again. So we'll do the best we can to get videos out when I can. So um, if you have tagged me on something recently, I promise I will get to those tags soon. I just haven't had the time that I like to dedicate to the tags. So the first book I'm going to mention is the nonfiction book for the month, and that was Saving My Assassin by Virginia Proden. This was an absolutely amazing, incredible, touching, heartwarming book. I highly recommend it to anyone. So this is about Virginia who um, grew up in Romania during the worst part of the communist you know, regime there. It was um, awful. And um, she became, became a believer in Christ and started helping churches to um, basically fight the government, wanting to shut them down. And she had her life threatened. And there is a detailed story of when someone actually came into her office intentionally trying to kill her and things have a good ending things have a good ending my friends it was a hard story at times to read even before you know the government started threatening her personally um she didn't have the best upbringing she had a very rough go um i just can't imagine what it would like to have lived through some of the things she lived through but you know um, just an example of God's grace and his mercy in her life um, that she's still alive today after dealing with the communist regime. So um, that's that. Um, I also read through a lot of the Pickwick papers with Courtney from Courtney Reads, and we're going to be continuing that this month. But um, of course, that is by Charles Dickens. It's his first um, novel that was published and it was serialized in magazines and it was published. This is the only one that I've read of his that I feel like, man, this could have been a lot shorter, <laughs> but, um, I was not loving it. I was just amused, but now I'm starting to really appreciate it a lot. So, um, that's where I stand with that. I wanted to mention that even though I didn't finish it, that I'm still working on it because it was in my September TBR. We won't finish it sometime this month for October. And then um, Candlebook Library and a bunch of other wonderful ladies hosted a Back to Hogwarts Readathon. So I wasn't able to participate in all the prompts. I just didn't have time, but I wanted to reread a Harry Potter book. So I decided to reread The Prisoner of Azkaban. And I love it even more now. Um, a little older, you know, reading it and... Um, just appreciate the relationships in the book, um, the family feel of it, the found family aspect of it. Um, I think it's wonderful. And then my kids and I, and I've tried so many ways to get the sticker off without damaging the book. <laughs> we read The Book of Three. This was a library sale pick by Lloyd Alexander. And another fantasy book that just has the most wonderful found family feel. We have Taryn, who's the assistant pig keeper, who um, goes trying to find this pig that's an oracle. <laughs> he runs away and he meets, um, you know, some interesting people that help him on his way. They're fighting evil. And there was a creature named Gurji that my children absolutely adored when I did Gurji in a silly voice. And so we have started The Black Cauldron, which is book two. So I definitely recommend. I know The Black Cauldron is more well known because it has a film um, adapted from it, named after it. But I would definitely not start with The Black Cauldron. I would read the book of three first because that establishes your characters. And I think it will be much more edifying too as a reader if you read the book of three before you start the black cauldron all right then um my kids and i listened to um the penderwicks on garden street this is book two in the penderwick series and it is a perfect fall read i even put it in a fall recommendations video that i did we've got four sisters which i feel is like the perfect amount for novel because they can play off of each other so well with that number and have such individual characters 
you have your sciencey one, you have your kind of naughty one, you have your creative one, you have your one that's on the cusp of growing up, but still a little girl. You know, you have all that. You have the widowed father. Um, no, he's a widower. He's not widowed. He's a widow word. Is that a word? Am I saying that right? Anyway, you have him and, um, he has started dating again and the girls reacting to that and just their different pursuits. I feel like it's a good book. The girls can be naughty, but I feel like there's lessons in their naughtiness that we can learn from as a family. Um, and then the other book that I was going to mention that I read was by Jamie Jo Wright, and that is The Vanishing at Castle Moreau. And I really like gothic feel, creepy, but not evil. And I feel like her books are great for that. And I'm also a sucker for dual timelines. And that is what she writes is dual timeline suspenses, usually with a romance and they're Christian based. Usually there's a romantic element to them. But I felt like the, there was just the love interest introduced and there was some tension, but there wasn't a whole lot of actually romantic interaction, if that makes sense. We've got Daisy in the late 1800s and we've got Cleo who is in present time and, um, events that go, uh, um, happen at Castle Moreau are very suspicious. Women have disappeared. And so, um, they're both kind of wrestling with what happened and there are family members um, that are males involved in both timelines that there is some attraction. So that is what I read September. What did you read in September? I'd love to know. Please put that below in the comments and I hope that you read a lot. Bye.